Hello everyone. In this video, I want to talk about how you can set up the data exchange definition for specific requirements from the from your bank to match the specification from your bank for the EFT. EFT means the electronic fund transfer. So how can we achieve this in Dynamics 365 Business Central? So you could see I'm on the payment journal of uh, my uh, Business Central. I'm still using Business Central version 14, so I'm still having the Windows client. So on this exported EFT file, which is the TXT format, that you can see the amount showing up here, uh, which is matching this amount on my payment journal line, and it is $128.02. So for this $128.02, if you look at the exact requirements from the bank then it tells you for the this is the detail so you have for the specification provided by your bank it has the detail record it has the header and also it has the trailer so we are looking at the detailed record and under the detailed record you could see for this amount this is the requirement from the bank the value must be greater than zero and the field is unsigned so minus no plus all minus indicators. Oh, so if the field is unsigned, so it doesn't want you to put in plus all minus indicator on that. And decimal point is not accepted. So it doesn't want to be this format, like I have a point here, which is the decimal point. The field must use leading zeros. So we are meeting that requirement, we are using the leading zeros. And then example is this $1,234.56 is entered as all the four zeros in the front, then is the number, but you don't see the, the decimal there. So if example, this uh, this amount is entered, even like uh, after decimal places, you have two zeros, like in your dynamic snap or business central, if you are rounding that amount in the payment journal to two decimal places, then you will see it's like this format. There's no dot in the middle to indicate a decimal. So, but our file obviously does not meet this requirement. That's a disregard this 10 character requirement for, for now, but we can easily change that in the length of the data exchange definition. So in order to achieve that, let's go to our data exchange definition. And how do you know which data exchange definition is used? Okay. So actually I'm using this one, C-A-E-F-T-T-D. That's the one I want to use, but let's go to this bank account to see, to see which one is used. So uh, in my payment journal, then the bank I'm using is this uh, operating bank, WWB operating bank, but I want to show you like I'm really using that bank. You can see it's a WWB bank account is this WWB dash operating bank, okay? So if we go to that bank card, look at the transfer fast tab. Then under the transfer fast tab, it will specify the payment export format. So this is where you specify the data exchange definition. So actually here you can see the data exchange definition code here is the CAEFT default. So actually we need to change that format instead of instead of the other one, okay? So then let's go to the data exchange definition. Just uh, filter by this data exchange definition. So the amount we want to uh, change is under the detail section. And then we want to currently the payment amount right now, the dance is nine characters. We're using, uh, we're using the pad character of zero and it's uh, right to justify it, okay? So what we can do here in order for it to meet our requirement, uh, we can go to the field mapping and find this field mapping for the payment amount. Then for this, this multiplier, this column does not show by default. If you don't have it show up here, you have, you have to choose column and add it from the left hand side to the right hand side. So the field is available and then in order to make that show in integer, we have to, uh, without the decimal, so we have to put 100 as the multiplier. Then we want to override the existing value, so we want to make that change. So after we make this change, then we can go back to see if this change can take effect. So what we need to do, we need to create a new purchase invoice, 
And for that one there, I have the EFT enabled and have the vendor bank account information set up for EFT. So that vendor actually for me in this system is this vendor 20,000. And then I'm gonna create a GL account on the line and uh, put uh, pick a GL account I can post to it and put the quantity. Let's put, uh, let's put uh, some amount there, okay? And so this amount after, after the calculation, so if you look at the statistics, so the total including tax is $135.93, okay? And then we can post this. We have to give it a vendor invoice number in order for us to post. So let's post this. Then let's go to the payment journal and then we can just create a payment journal line for this entry. So we can create for this entry. Okay, so then we can go to the applies to doc number. Then we can just select this new invoice, 135.93, that's the one, and click OK. So it's populated on the line. The first step you need to do for the EFT is the export, but we forgot to select the bank payment type, that's important. So then you export it to, I'm going to export it to my desktop. And then after the export, I can go to actions and generate the EFT file. So I can see after export, this line shows up here. Click on actions, generate EFT file, still select my desktop. Let's just save it there for easy access. So then I'm going to my um, desktop. So we can take a look there. So under the desktop, uh, that's just uh, sort by this date modified. Then we can take a look of this file generated. So actually, it's not what it's still not what we want. So here is what you have to pay attention to. The reason it is not as what I expected is because I forgot the data type. So if we go back to that data exchange definition, because the data type I use for that payment amount field right now is text. You cannot use multiplier on the on the tax data type because for the tax it's not a number you can have calculation on, right? So then I have to change this. You see now this is payment amount here. The data type I have to change it to use the decimal. Okay. Only one is the data type of number, like a decimal or it doesn't have the integer, but only one this is a data type of data, uh not text, then we can have the mass calculation on it. We can have the calculation on it. Otherwise, then it will not be able to times 100 if it's text. Okay, so that's the change we need to do. I'm gonna, but after you select this, you have to add a data format culture. Let's put uh, this en-us here. So then we can save this change. Let's double check to make sure this change has been saved. So let's go back to this payment amount. Then we can see this change is saved. It's decimal data tab, and the data formatting culture is en-us. Okay, so now let's go back. Let's create a new invoice again. And then for this new invoice, I'm still gonna use this vendor. So let's put in the vendor number, and then just in the line select GL account and select this first GL account and put a quantity one and uh, 120, 19. Let's put another number, go to statistics, F7. You can see the total is 135.81, right? With this, the tax. And then we can give it a wondering voice number, EFT, that's four, okay. So let's post this, then go to the payment journal so we can Let's see if I have the payment journal open. Then let's create another line for this vendor. I'm gonna select this. And in the applies to doc number, let's go to um, click on this drop down. Then we can select this. This is the 135.81, click on OK. Okay, and now we have this populated. Let's export it first, okay and still select my desktop. And now that's uh, 
create a generate a EFT file. Click on actions, generate EFT file, actions, generate EFT files. Still select my desktop to generate it. Okay, it's generated. Let's take a look how it looks like now. We still sort by this data modified, date modified. And then open this txt file. So you can see now this amount is the amount is the format we are expecting, right? Because we changed it. There are two things we need to change. In the field mapping, you have to apply the multiplier, and that multiplier has to be 100. And you have to override the existing value with, with the decimal in the field mapping. And uh, under the definition, you have to specify the data type. The line definition has to have a data type of uh, the decimal instead of text, OK? So then that multiplier can be applied for the calculation. So this is the format we expect. It will be $135.81. OK, thank you so much for watching this YouTube video. I hope to see you guys again next time. Thank you for watching this Archer Point video. Stay in the know with the latest on Microsoft Dynamics by subscribing to our channel. You can also learn more from our blog at archerpoint.com or email info at archerpoint.com to contact us. See you in the next video.